the Australian government is offering fully funded scholarship for international students who are looking to have either their bachelor's, master's or PhD in Australia. The good thing is that there is no application fee and people who are from native English speaking countries do not need to do not need to write the IELTS. There are several countries that are eligible for this scholarship and it's very important that you verify the application process for your country. In this video, I'm going to take you through the step-by-step -step process to apply for this scholarship from the beginning to the end. And the good thing is I'm also going to offer tips for you that will help you to win the scholarship. So without wasting much time, let's dive right into the application process. So to apply, the first thing is you go to Google and type Australia Awards Scholarship. It will be the first thing that you will see on the screen. This is it, Australia Awards Scholarship. You will click on this link and it will bring you to this page. This page will give you all the information you need. As I said, in this video, I'm going to take you through the application process. So. Take your time. It's very important you read all this information because this information is what is going to help you prepare a competitive application and increase your chance of getting selected. So all the details are here. These are, this is what you should look at. Look at the participating countries to be sure that your country is part of the countries that can apply for the scholarship. Check the opening and closing dates. For most countries, the closing date is 30th April check the institutions and check the frequently asked questions this is one of the tips to win scholarships check the frequently asked questions and use this and ensure that what you actually submit is in line with what they are looking for so without wasting much time let's apply so i will leave the application link in the description box this is how it's going to look like as you see the deadline is 30th april australian at um 2359 Australian Eastern Standard Time. So to apply, you will have to register. So I'll click on this. Login or register. It will take some time to process. Then you put in, if you've never applied before, you will choose register new account. I have already registered. And once you finish registering, you will see this email. Thank you for registering for the scholarship system. So what they do is they will send you in your email that you use to register a temporary password. This is what you are going to use to log in. Then you will change your password. So this is how it's going to work. So now, because I said I've already registered, I'm just going to put in my details and log in and I'll, t I'll take you through the process to so log on. So each time you log on, they are going to send your one-time password to your email that you are going to use to log in. So once we do that, once you register and you log in, this is how the portal is going to look like. Then you look for applications on the left-hand side of the screen, this part, and you click on this. Here you can see create new applications. I'm going to create a new application. And we will start by choosing which scholarship you can apply for. This portal can be used to apply for a number of scholarships, but for this, we are applying for the Australian Awards Scholarship. So I'll, I'll click on this and click on next. Whenever you are watching and what you see is different from your screen, just pause and take your time. Probably you missed a step. So take your time and go back again and watch it again. So now let's, let's fill in our personal information. So my title is Miss. Your name is already here from when you were registering. So place of birth, Accra. Your gender, female. Country of citizenship. You choose the country where you are come from. So I'm from Ghana. Do you have dual citizenship? No. Which country are you living in now? You will choose that. I'm going to choose Ghana. Have you applied? Are you intending to apply for permanent residency? No. Sorry, no. If you have this, you click on this passport number, provided if you have a passport. So I'm just going to put something there. One, two, three, four, five. Issue date. 2020. I just randomly chose something. Expiry date. Uh, I'm going to choose 2030. So save.
So now this is, as you see, this is the checklist. This is what we are going to fill. There are 19 things that we are going to fill. The good thing is that you could save it and always come back to it. So as we said, it was, the deadline is 30th April. Our draft is incomplete. So once we have everything, it should be complete now. So let's fill where you stay your address. I'm just going to put something there. State of province, Accra. Please put in the right details. Your town or city, Accra. Um, country, Ghana. These are your personal information that you could do on your own. Please, so this should be the same here. And please take that if you're mailing so we could go to next. I mean, click below. So if you are married, you put in your spouse's details. So not applicable because I'm single. So if you know anybody who is looking for a wife, please link me up. <laughs> so provide family name and other names as they appear in your spouses. So this is not applicable. So we could go to next. So now children's detail, if you have kids, all you do is to add. I'm going to do it so that you see how it's going to look like. So you provide your details here, then you save. But for me, it's not applicable. So I'm going to go to, I'm going to cancel. Okay, so here I choose not applicable. Then next. here it's giving me i don't know what's happening here so i'm gonna go back here to check maybe i missed something for my contact details ensure there's at least one contact phone number listed okay so i didn't put a phone number here so mobile phone two three three one two three four five six six seven so you see that is why it's good to check here so Wherever you have wrong, it means you've not put in the details, like the details is not complete yet. So you see now it's okay. So I'm going to emergency contact details. Your emergency contact is the one that will contact if there's something wrong with you. So my title may be Mr. Family Name Abuaje. Um, given name AA, gender male. Relationship to you, father. Phone number 233123456678. Primary email AA. You just put in AA at gmail.com. Current residential address 123 Accra. Accra. Town or city, Accra, um, country, Ghana. As I said, all these things, I'm just putting it there. You should put in the right details for your case. So previous scholarships, these are scholarships that you've had before. If you've never had any scholarship, you could choose not applicable. But I'm going to click add for us to see how it's going to look like. So scholarship or fellowship title. So AA, the start date, maybe the year, maybe twenty January 2021, and date, uh, yeah, I randomly chose something. Qualification, if applicable, institution, the name of the institution that gave you the scholarship. I'm just going to choose Kenya University, country, Ghana. Then... You save. So for every scholarship or fellowship you've gotten, you are going to put all of them here. So you could add any other ones that you have. If you don't have any of them, you just choose not applicable. So we go to next. So now we have the scholarship application. What other scholarships are you going to apply for this year? So if it's not only just the Australian Award Scholarship, you can put in other scholarships that you plan to apply for. How have you previously applied for a DFAT, formerly Ox A Scholarship, but were unsuccessful? So if you've ever applied for it before, you say yes or no. So here I'm going to choose no, and I'm going to go to next.
So propose study program and the program you want to study you are going to add. And for this scholarship, there are certain institutions that you would you can apply for. So that's why I told you to read those links I told you to do. That's why these are very important. Actually, I was participating in universities. It will be the first one. I'm going to click on it. It's going to bring me here, and I'm going to click on these documents. So these are the universities that are part of the award. So I'm just going to choose one. Um, let me see. Do we have University of Queensland? I'm sure it should be here. The University of Queensland. So come on, see. I'm just going to put the name here. And let's say I want to do something. I said it's very important that you focus on the priority areas of your country. So for Africa, the priority fields of study is climate change, agriculture and food security, money and energy. These are the priority areas. So I want something in agriculture. So University of Queensland, I'm going to just put agriculture to see the program that will come. So School of Agriculture and Food Sustainability. So you will choose a program. When you choose an university, choose the program and go check. So like this. So I'm going to open this. And when you come here, where's where we are? Here, these are the details you need. You need the... You need the Creeker School, the course title and all these things. So that's what I'm going to look for. So to find the course course details, every program has its own. So the one I'm doing is for this. It's for the agricultural science I told you about. You see, it's filled in the details. So what you do, the way you find it is you course um, Commonwealth. I think I'm also going to make a separate video. course Commonwealth. Okay, it's Cre. It came up. So this one, creekerseducation.gov.au. When you come here, you go to course search. Then you type the state. It was Queensland because I'm looking at University of Queensland and the program is agricultural science. And I go to start search. So, you know, it's brought it up. But I'm looking for Masters of Agricultural Science and it's coursework. So there are two of them. There's 78 weeks and there's 104. It's very important that you go to the website, um, the university you're applying for, to be sure which one you want to do. So the entry requirement, the overview, they will give you the details. I don't really want to go into the details, but take your time and read the program to know which one you want to do see full requirements they'll give you all the details on their website so i come here and i'm going to choose the one or four weeks because it's longer anyone you want i'll click on this link and it's going to give me the code i'm just going to copy that and that is what i will come and put here I think this was a 78 weeks, so you choose and you put there. Institutions, minimum English required for the course. You could go and click it here. So preference. I'm going to enlarge this. One. Complete the section. If the studies will be a research or a combination of research and coursework. This is a coursework program. So not applicable for the people who are doing research. You have to provide information on your research proposal details. I'm going to save it. And the good thing about the research proposal is I have a video on how to write the research proposal. I'm just going to take you there. So Barbara Boadje, YouTube research proposal. So there are how there are two videos. There's this one, how to write and prepare a research proposal, and how to this one. I've taken a research proposal and I'm taking you through the process. 
I'm going to try and leave this as a link in the description box so that you could also hello, hello, go, hello. go see it. So I take you through that. So that's not the purpose of this video. So we'll go back to what we were doing. So now that is it. If you want to add other programs, you can add and it's going to be the same process. Um, to make it faster for the rest, I'm going to leave you to fill those points and I'm going to go to the point that is very important and that is writing the essay. So as you can see, these are your qualifications. Highest level first. So be very careful with this. Ensure that the, the most highest. So if your bachelor's is the highest, your bachelor should come first. So English language details, I'm just going to click it so that we have a look at how it looks like. But as usual, you could, is English your first language? Yes. You go to next. Computer literacy details, computer training details, your current employment, previous employment. You fill all those details. A uh, year computer literate. Yes. How regular do you use your PC? Daily. Do you have experience with? So whichever one you have experience with is you are going to choose. If you don't have experience, just leave it. Like it's really not compulsory to just choose the ones that you know how to use internet browser. Then you go to next. Um, computer training details. If you've completed any formal computer training courses you just add it here not applicable to apply for the scholarship you you should have ha you should have work experience so we look at your if you are currently employed you put in the details and you we are good to go if you don't have employment here not applicable i'm going to leave these ones for you to do this is the most important part this the um the part where you have to put in some essays. So these are the questions and I've provided some answers for you or some things that you could brainstorm with. One good thing is that when you're applying, most of these questions are the same questions for all scholarships. So when I go back here, I'll go to my channel and I'm going to suggest. If you are looking for university, that I'm has going to suggest these, these videos for you, the Chevening. Because I took my time to really go through each of the essays. The Chevening is going to help you. The Macaw, Macaw, McBain is going to help you because I also took my time for this um, video. And the statement, writing a statement of purpose. These are the three videos that is going to help you with this application but also taking my time to go through some of this so why did you choose your proposed course and institution at this point you can pause the video and look at the things i've written to help you brainstorm so you could talk about the strong reputation in the desired field of study so maybe i'm interested in concrete I'll be like, this institution has a strong reputation in concrete and I'll write something about it because this is the number of words you need. You could also look at the course curriculum. So you look at the course, the, um, the courses that you are going to take and see which one, like the ones that's of interest to you. And you could write your essay about how they work well for your academic and career goals. You could look at um, maybe the institution, they offer research and internships or practical experiences, which you are, which you are really interested in and you, you think is going to help you in your career. Or you could even look at the professors in that field. You could mention like a few of them, their names, the work they are doing and how you think that knowledge in that field is going to help you in future or your future career. So these are some of the things you could look at. How will the proposed study contribute to your career? So based on what you study, it could make you more competitive candidates in the job market. The practical experience and hands-on offered by the or enhance your empl employability to make you more people want to employ you because of the skill set you are going to have. Be very specific and give specific examples. So network opportunity like with your mates and your colleagues, you think it could serve as an avenue for job placement and even mentorship. And the research 
components will allow you to contribute to the field of knowledge and also establish you as a subject matter in that field. So these are some of the things that the program could help you. You don't have to, the other things that you can think about, these are just ideas that you could work with. This I've taken my time to really uh, work on this because how have you contributed to solving a challenge and to implementing change or reform? Be specific and include what aspects of your leadership knowledge, skills, and practice you consider to be well established and effective. I took my time to answer this here. So you could identify the challenge. So here, what specific I'm going to enlarge this. I will try and also leave this in the description box that you could all access and use this to brainstorm. So here you could look, you talk about a challenge, a specific challenge or problem you address. You could also talk about how you got access to that information, how you got to know that and what actually motivated you to take action. Because this is a multiple part. So you also talk about the, here they talk about leadership, knowledge, skills and practice. So here you talk about what leadership knowledge and skills did you use and how did you solve this issue? Collaboration, who did you work with and the people you worked with, what exactly did they do? And how did you um, partner with them to come up with solutions? What did you guys do? So the creative method. So what approaches did you use to solve the problem? Did you use something that's already existing or did you modify it or did you create something new? Did you use any new technology? Did you use social media? Like you talk about all these things in this section. So specific actions, be very specific. So what exactly did you do to solve the problem? Did you achieve any milestone? Maybe, maybe after three months, you saw this and these, these are milestones. The outcomes and impact, this is very important. So what were the outcomes or results of your effort? How did your solution lead to tangible challenge? So changes so reflection so what aspect of your leadership approach do you consider particularly effective in solving the problem so now you finish the project so you are thinking about it maybe my communication skills help me to really solve this problem you could also talk about the key lessons you learned from the project like what were some of the hardships that you experienced how did you overcome it if you couldn't overcome it like what did you do and how has this experience shaped your understanding of leadership and problem solving so here, for each one, I've given uh, some answers to help you to think about what you want to do. So I chose uh, agriculture because, as I said, for every country, there are priority areas. For Africa, of which Ghana is part, some of their priority areas are it's food, there's food agriculture, uh, I'm going to search for this priority. So there's agriculture and food security. So that's why I chose food. So try and choose the priority areas. And if you have experience in that field, use that. That will help your application to be very competitive. So you could take it. So this is it. You can take a screenshot to help you so these are some of the questions that you find the answers to and this is like an, a specific example that i have i used to help you do that so just take a screenshot but i'll try and leave this link in the description box if i forget to leave it just because there's a lot i do just let me know in the comment section i'll share with you so the next question is Please give up to three practical examples of how you intend to use the knowledge, skills, and connections you will gain from your scholarship. Possible tasks can be personal and or professional and list any possible constraints you think may prevent you from achieving these tasks. So at this point, to also pause the video, you can take a screenshot. So here you talk about your career goals and how can the scholarship or program help you to achieve them? Provide examples of how you plan to apply the skills and expertise acquired through the scholarship. The scholarship is basically the program you are going to study in your professional endeavors. So are there specific industry sectors or roles where you see yourself making an impact with the knowledge and connections gained? So this is the example that I've put in some comments on that, but we will look at it on a bigger 
yeah so here this is the question and the answer is what i talked about so you could be like i want a career in sustainable agriculture and food security so that's your career goal I aim to apply the skills acquired in agricultural research and data analysis to address challenges related to crop productivity and re resilience in my community. I also want to leverage the connections, such as networking with industry experts, colleagues, and researchers to explore opportunities for collaboration on projects aimed at improving XXX. So here, an example is agricultural practice and enhan enhancing food security. I want to organize workshops. I want to collaborate with local NGOs set up agricultural clubs in school, set up community farms. So these are some of the ideas that you can think about and write about and build upon them in your essay. So the, the, some of the constraints will be acceptance of collaborations. Like you want to collaborate with NGOs, they might say no. You want to set up um, clubs in schools, they might say no. You want to set up community farms, maybe your MP will say no. So these are some of the challenges that you might face. So think about it. So access to resources such as venue for workshops and training and finances. So think about all these things and build upon them. So now one of the development theme that is most relevant to your application, even though it may be relevant to more than one. So I'm choosing food security. Do you currently have any connections or relationships? So no, no, no. So as I said, for these ones, I'm not going to answer them. You could do them on your own because it's easy. So I'm looking at professional membership. So I'm going to go to next. Okay, so here, if you are part of any membership, like the Ghana Institute of Engineers or like professional membership not really clubs these are professional memberships so american concrete institute you put those names there and that's it if you don't have any professional memberships you could leave that but as i said there should be professional memberships so communication so where did you first learn about australia awards these are the options you could choose other then you could put my youtube there documentary evidence this is where you're going to upload your documents so you um these are the minimum you must upload so every country their requirements is different so you it's very important to check the requirements for your country so for africa these are the required documents your passport your undergraduate degree your cv your employee referee report your academic referee report these ones they are templates that are available that you have to use for your employee um i'm going to show you i'm i'm going to do this because i saw it australia i was so that's why i said it's very important to read that website employee report so i think it's this one okay so australia okay this is laos so this is how the referee report looks like so they just have to fill in the details you fill this is your name you fill these details yourselves and you're a free or you could fill the ones you want and they would do this evaluation for you by being to be sure you could come back here home no i'm gonna go back again australia award scholarship this one but that as uh, that is a report that is I know I saw it some. I'm going to search in the web referee reference. Okay, no, I don't know why I saw it. Okay, so this is it. Supporting the check your pathway and 
such as your free report to see if your country requires additional support in such as your free report. So this is a referee report. This is a template. So you could just down. I think it's similar to the one I showed you. So yeah, similar to that. So that is the template you're going to send to them to fill. Yeah. So they fill it, then you will submit it as part of your document. So so this is the minimum. So as you could see, you may also upload. So for your for Ghana, these are the required documents that you need to upload. So I'm going to leave this. You're going to just do add. Then you document type the description. Then you choose file. Then you save. And you should see it there. The declaration. This will be the last part. For here, all you have to do is I declare. Then you go to submit. I'm not going to submit it, but you go to submit. And once you submit, whatever they tell you, that is going to be it. It should be like you've submitted your document. And when you come back to, you could always come back again to fill it. And this is incomplete. When you come back, it should, if you don't want to, if you don't want to submit, you could delete your application, but that is not what we want to do. So it should change from incomplete. Once you submit it, once it's incomplete, you know that you have submitted your application. So I'm going to return to the list. So whenever you log in and you come back, you are going to see something like this incomplete draft. Then you go to action. Then you can edit from wherever you ended. The list of documents, you have a CV. A CV is very important. So most of you don't know how to write that. You go to my channel. And you would go look for just type CV. I'm sure CV should come up. So these are some. I was advise you to watch this video to write a comprehensive video. So we. If are, you are looking for university, there has no. So apart from that, there are so many scholarships that you could apply for. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comment section. Like, if you want me to make more videos like this, like it. Because it helps me to have an idea of the kind of videos you're looking for. And I'm going to make them. So I'm waiting for you and to hear from me again. Bye.